Greetings one and all, my name is Lancer and welcome back once again to Fate Zero. We will be doing episodes 17 and 18 today. Now, first of all, I need to preface because this is going to get confusing. The episodes 17 and 18 that I'm going to be watching are not the actual 17 and 18 because the episode 17 I'm going to be watching today is actually episode 18 and the episode 18 is actually episode 19 and then when we actually do watch episode 17, that's going to be titled episode 19. Mainly because the way I look at the structure of this show, it makes more sense to watch these two episodes, especially coming off of episode 16 and everything that it kind of talks about and deals with. It makes more sense to then go into these two episodes, which you'll see why once we get into it. But first of all, last time on Fade Zero, oh man, truly the beginning of the depression. We saw the very brutal and very tragic end to Lancer and also very brutal end to Salau and Kanith at the hands of Kiritsugu and Maya. Or well, even before all that, we saw the death of of Risei Kotomine, Kirei's father, sort of random and out of nowhere. <laughs> Kanith wanted to ensure that no other masters could get command seals, which is fair, so he shot the priest in the back. But main thing we're focusing on in this episode, which again makes more sense coming off the end of the previous episode, Kiritsugu. Him and Saber had quite the butting of heads, their two ideologies finally coming to a head, and Kiritsugu sort of finally acknowledging Saber's existence. And the important line coming into this episode was when Saber confronted Kiritsugu it was like, surely at some point in your youth, you aspired to be a hero. And through all that sorrow and everything, surely you realize that through bringing what you view as peace to the world, it will only spawn more conflict. I'm interested to get into these two episodes because, but for me, when it comes to like rewatching a lot of stuff, it's stuff I don't really rewatch too often. There is one scene in one of the later episodes that I do, but there's going to be a lot to talk about. So let's just get right into these episodes. <laughs> He was a wild child. I thought he got more of those eyes from his later experiences in life, but I guess he's always kind of had those just deadpan. Oh, this beach. Keep this shot of the beach in mind. No OP, just credits. Hey, isn't Arimago the word for crab? Yep. Arimago. Well, according to the legend, the shrine where the village worshipped those gods was located way up in the mountains, right about the place where your house is. <laughs> wow, <laughs> convenient. They tell me that if I go there too often, I'll end up cursed for life. You're kidding. In the village, they just treat you like you're my little brother. <sighs> your little brother, huh? What the? No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but uh, I mean, I'll just leave it at Shotokan. Get that shit out of the show. <laughs> uh, remove my tainted mind. And it was your big idea to call me Carrie. Well, yeah. Carrie. Because your actual name is really hard to say. Carrie. Ugh, Kiritsugu. Jeez. Carrie Tugu. Not even close. Hey, Dad. Is that a new one? Pops. That's right. These flowers don't wither. That's because I've altered the flow of time. Well, now we see where the time altar comes from. The big question is whether or not we can get the same theory to work on humans. Shirley has been watching closely and learning while she assists me. She does seem to have the natural gift to be a mage. Hmm, imagine her. Time altar. Double XL. Hey, Dad. Huh? What? You think I could give it a try? It's still too early for you. This isn't a game. There are dangers. They never talk about it. Kiritsugu's mother. What happened to her? Well, I mean, going into future stuff, I think it's safe to assume what happened to her. You must stop going up to that mansion. Never trust a priest, especially in fate. He says if I stay working there, I'll get possessed by a demon someday. He told me just, that a powerful talisman. Just throw a knife around. <laughs> Are you sure you mm. should be bit through the skin? Tell me, Harry. What do you want to grow up to be? <laughs> If you decide to take up your dad's work, what do you think you'll use it for? <laughs> What'll you use that power for? Cut to his fight with Kanus. <laughs> I guess I'll have to wait until you grow up to see what you're gonna do with your power. I'll stay with you until that day comes. <sighs> Kiritsugu, you didn't go into my workshop last night, did you? <sighs> no, I didn't. I see. Hmm. Stay here. Don't go into the village today. Yeah, I'm sure he'll do that. <laughs> Tess. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what happened? 
Uh oh, surely. Surely it ain't so. So. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> I only wanted to prove it worked. This research. Well, <laughs> it did, just not in the way you wanted. <laughs> Oh, the music, dude. Carrie, I want you to stay here for the time being. I'll go inform the village. Ah, shit. Well, priest is dead. <laughs> now, you may think zombie, which by all accounts, yes, but they are something different. <laughs> Inquisitors. Just like Kirei. Mages too. What is all this? His dad was researching eternal life. <laughs> this woman looks familiar. It's like COD zombies. Well, if you just sit there like that, you'll be joining them soon enough. You would know them as vampires. There you go. The name Not zombies. Is, is dead apostles. Dead apostles, that's apostles, right. They drink blood to increase their numbers. Zombies, more or less, yeah, they're just zombies, but nah, dead apostles. That sounds cooler. <laughs> the other group is from the Mages Association, mm -hmm. and they're harder to explain. So then, whose side are you on? I'm something akin to a salesman to the Mages Association. There was someone who became a dead apostle first. Someone infected mm -hmm. them with the medium that turns people into those creatures. Can you think of any likely spots where I should look? Dang. And he got paid for it, too. Dad, why were you researching dead apostles? How did you know about that? Surely. Use the magic on herself. Well... That's most unfortunate. <laughs> but you can't change what's already happened. Will you use me like you use Shirley? Don't be stupid. A dead apostle that can't control its bloodlust is a failure. <laughs> but the Emia family research requires an unlimited amount of time. The root will never be attained by someone with a mortal body. It's always the fucking root. <laughs> time, we don't have time to let you gather your things. Come on. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I have to be the one. Couldn't kill Shirley, but <laughs> doesn't hesitate with him. <laughs> Tell me, Carrie, what do you want to grow up to be? <laughs> yeah, well, we know what he grows up to be. First kill. His own father. If this man had escaped, he'd have continued his dead apostles research somewhere else. <laughs> well, that's a pretty crappy reason for a kid to kill his father. You let him do it. <laughs> Wanna take anything? Nothing at all. Nope. Oh, this song. I'm leaving it all behind. Sometime, somewhere. I love these two episodes just because they literally like are their own thing. Because like they have their own ending. They don't have openings. There's a world where you could technically start Fade Zero by watching these two episodes. And I've kind of been curious with that. It's an experiment I kind of want to do. Obviously, I can never do it with myself just because, you know, I know the whole context of the story. But showing it to someone for the first time, showing them these two episodes first and knowing the whole backstory of Kiritsuko and then going into the rest of Fate. Again, that's why I chose to watch it like this because I think the progression of the story at work seeing Kari Tsugu throughout like the fourth Holy Grail War up to that point and then getting his story I think it works really well yeah that was a uh, Kari Tsugu's childhood <laughs> started about as you would expect for someone especially knowing what he gets up to as an adult but now his teenage years now uh, this is when she talked about the origin rounds your origin is based on cutting in time kid yeah, there's the bullets. I wonder how many he's used. Made 66 in total. 66. Did he use two against Kanith? Because obviously he used the one that really fucked him up, but then like the one before that that went through his shoulder, was that one? But now we got Matt Mercer. We have him back. Natalia, do you read me? Natalia. She said she'd get him off the island and then he can do whatever he wants after that. He just chose to stay with her. I mean, smart. The hell else do you do? <laughs> Pow. 
His eyes are even more glazed over now. I spent the next several years living with Natalia Kaminsky, <laughs> the Mages Association, and the Church. The rivalry between those two enormous organizations kept her business booming. Such a simple little thing, him talking about the two organizations doesn't give a shit about either. Quick learner. All around the world, on every single continent, the same horrors happen every day. Except worse, because it's just actual people. Oh, that was a church? May not have been an inquisitor, but I never noticed that's a church member. He's a natural. Are you trying to be a hero or something? <laughs> Deep down. Killing merely one man isn't the solution. It's not that simple. Kill every single person all around the world who's like our target here. If you could somehow manage to do that, <laughs> maybe it would be possible. I wish he holds on to for his entire life, pretty I much. Kidding. I would watch this anime. This entire point in his life from like when he leaves the island up to when he meets Iris Vale and like runs in with the Einsburns and all that. I still love fate and all the different stories that it does for its own reasons but it's these kind of stories where it's just like come on. <laughs> I love fate stuff but I just they're so stuck in with like the fate stay night stuff. I sort of get just because with fate stay night there's more of it even though it's the same story just retold three different times in different ways and then also fate grand order with its endless shit. I get kind of coming back to this I don't know, there's still a lot more I want to talk about with that, but we have to watch more. Look, kid, if you try to save someone and you get yourself killed, it'll all be for nothing. I don't think it's possible to save everyone, but I do want to save as many as I possibly can. <sighs> yep. Well, Needs of the many, needs of the few. Do you know him? The mage Odd Vorzak. <laughs> Here we He's go. He's a dead apostle who uses his bee familiars to create his ghouls. The last town he visited was completely and utterly annihilated. A town. <laughs> I was from a town. Wait, okay, I never understood this. So he is a dead apostle? How is he normal then? He just has good control, I guess. He does have bee familiars. Bugs. Natalia, can I have one of those too? <laughs> I won't try to stop you, but they aren't good for you. Well... Well, we see where he gets his addiction. <laughs> Though for Kiritsuku, I wouldn't say it's so much an addiction as a coping mechanism. <laughs> I'll be handling this myself. This guy is a clever target who managed to give me the slip ones. What should I do? He's a mime. I'm fairly certain he has associates working for him in New York. He can't keep his bees with him in a carry-on when he flies. I see. Oh. Uh, this is the only time this song plays. Roger, roger. Yeah, you don't look suspicious. <laughs> that easy, huh? That was much easier than I expected. Not the bees. More dead apostles. He ate the bees. <laughs> we have a big problem here. Looks like they've taken the cockpit. Shit. I am coming home. I'm coming home alive. Carrying Borsak's body. But first, uh -huh. I need to do something. Yeah. You can do this, Italia. <laughs> he already knows. Do. Prepare a nice warm bed for me and wait. Shut up. I love this sequence. All that separates me from the night of the living flying dead. Living <laughs> flying cockpit security door. This thing may be too big for me to handle by myself. Excuse me? But what do I do with all these monsters in back? <laughs> Don't worry about that. I have it all worked out, Natalia. <laughs> Why is he in a boat? Not at the airport. You had a lot of potential. Too much. What does that mean? Now they're talking about the fucking past. You had that skill from the very start. It's a hell of a gift. And he started with his own father. This was the only way of life I knew how to teach you. So you consider yourself my dad? <laughs> I'm a full grown woman, you rude little jerk. It's been pretty entertaining in its own way. Having something like a family in my life. I did always think of you as a mother. I was happy to have you. 
Look, kid, I think we better quit saying stuff that'll embarrass us next time we see each other, okay? <laughs> you know, maybe I'm just getting too old for this job. There it is. <laughs> maybe it's time to retire. There, yeah, there's another one. The only thing left for me to do would be to really act like a mother, I guess. RPG. <sighs> Natalia, you are my real, real. Family. 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 Just that little smile at the end. Uh. If Natalia had landed that plane safely, there's no telling how many people. Yeah. Might have died. <laughs> shut your mouth! Just shut up! Bastard! <sighs> Tell me, Carrie. What do you want to grow up to be? Jeez. I want to. He wants to save the world. <sighs> Those two episodes, man. Underrated. Well... Those were episodes, well, they were episodes 18 and 19, but obviously the way I watched them, episodes 17 and 18. <sighs> the backstory of Kiritsugu. I think it's perfect that it wasn't just one episode, because they probably could have, like, condensed it down, rushed it to be, like, one episode, but they took their time. You know, showing his childhood, you hardly even recognize him, just because, like, he's young, he's innocent, he's smiling. <laughs> to then, when he kills his father, then you start to really recognize him. And then showing his teenage years, him being raised by Natalia, the mercenary, and then having to kill her, too. It's one of those things where it's, like, it's completely justified why he- I mean, like he said, if that plane had landed, a lot more people would have died. Like, sure, Natalia maybe would have lived, but again, needs of the many, needs of the few. It's what she expected him to do, and honestly, what she wanted him to do. Again, that's why, like, that end may be a little cheesy to some people, just like, oh, she's saying all the things. Again, she's saying that because she knows it's the end. Like, she has full confidence that Kiritsugu is going to do that. I just love, like, because I remember kind of watching these episodes for the first time. You know, Natalia's talking to him, and they're, like, talking, like, Kiritsugu's, like, walking around. I thought he was supposed to, like, wait for her at the airport like why is he and then like so like first he goes to like this i assume like you know black market arms dealer gets something then he gets a bow he's in the ocean just like what the hell is going on and then like once he starts like building the rpg it's just like oh okay it starts sinking in and then it just all culminates just with that one just that smirk from her and the explosion just like she's proud i talked about it in the first episode for this that kuritsugu's mother is never mentioned at all though i think it's safe to assume that she probably was subject to his father's experiments in some regard. So it's kind of crazy, it's just so this like dead apostle thing has been a part of the Emiya house for a long time then, because that's what Norikata said, he was just like the Emiya the studies that have been passed down or something, I don't know. That didn't really connect for me until now. That's where Kiritsugu really gets his time altar from. Like his ability to manipulate his own time is from his father. Him with the flowers trying to halt aging. Probably was some shit where just like to make like an undead army, you know some like underworld type shit probably to sell to some like mage associate so because he did have like a big thing of cash at the end so yeah the emia name kind of has like dark connotations especially going into future stuff i mean obviously aside from just kiritsugu who is known for being a killer but like his father as well just like all the stuff with dead apostles yeah just what a story man again it's stuff that works on its own and i'd be curious to see somebody or like do it with somebody where i show them these two episodes first and then watch the rest of the show how much does that change like viewing the character of Kiritsugu especially when you get to episode 16 when him and Saber talk about like yeah in your youth you wanted to be a hero and whatnot it's a cool thing because like again you also look at these two episodes it makes you forget then when we jump back into the grail war it's just like oh yeah this is all in the same world <laughs> that's why it's like the fate world is is a rich world it's just a shame that it's only known for gender bending historical figures and weird romance plots but I'm here for this shit fuck fate stay night <laughs> I mean I can't say that because without fate stay night we don't have fate zero but either way kiritsugu's backstory man i mean the time that is skipped from him being a kid to him being a young adult again it's inferred him and natalia just kept doing jobs natalia trained him there's still a big gap though between like where he is now to when uh, like 10 years before the events of fate zero to when he meets ox and when he runs the 
turns when he meets Irie. Because I want to see the scene where like Oct talks to him about the grail, the holy grail. And there's a way that we can make your wish come true. You just need to participate in this war and win the holy grail and your wish can come true. Like I would love to see probably for the first time in a long time ever really Kiritsugu like has hope. I'm sure it's stuff that's in different adaptations and novels and stuff. I would love to see something like that. Do like a Fate Zero prequel. A prequel to the prequel. Call it like Fate Minus Zero or something. <laughs> just give me more. Like not even just Kiritsugu, like every other character in this. This has gone on long enough. We got more to watch. A good amount to watch. And yeah, it's only gonna get sadder from here. <laughs> Either way. These were my reactions to episodes 18 and 19. Join me next time for episode 17, as well as everything else that'll be coming out soon. So until next time, I'm Lancer. Thanks for watching.